This is the sound room. This was manned by four or five operators and always manned at sea. Um, we operated passively because as soon as you went active you gave your position away which was not the name of the game. So there was all this old fashioned equipment and it was either uh, trace, traces or listening only and they would listen for man-made type noises and then pass that information to the control room and they would uh, work their computers to find out what, what the contacts were doing. This is the uh, Cunning Tower and it was very, very awkward to get up and down. They had an airlock halfway up, which was extremely tight for space. And the airlock was there to prevent lots of water pouring down. Uh, at night, when it's rough, getting up and down here is a nightmare. Lots of water coming down and just very uncomfortable. This side of the control room, is where we're building up the tactical picture, the command system, and we're uh, tracking all of the uh, chip and submarine contacts, building up a picture here. Uh, come action stations, all that information is transferred over to the weapon system here, where weapons of choice are all lit up and ready to fire, and then you launch your torpedo or missile. Over this side, we've got our chart table, where we are plotting our position, of where we are relative to the earth because uh, obviously we've got no windows on the submarine uh, so we're doing it dead reckoning as such with inertial navigation system. This is the control room, this is the attack periscope and the search periscope is missing, obviously. Uh, over here, we had where we control the submarine. We had the fore placement, the aft placement, and the ship control officer watch was standing in the bandstand here. Over here, we've got the systems console, which controlled most of the ship systems. It did not control anything of the reactor. It controlled high pressure air, hydraulics, raising and lowering the mast, opening and shutting the main vents, blowing the main ballast tanks, and various other bits and pieces. This is the Junior 8's bunk space, 48-man uh, bunk space. Each bunk was about six foot too long, so it was quite a tight fit sometimes, two foot across. We never ever had enough bunks for the number of people on board, so that was always a problem. So quite often you had hot bunking, one man got out and his relief would get back into that bunk, hopefully changing the sleeping bag. This is the galley. This was uh, where we did all our meals. We had three chefs, 
and they would prepare the food for breakfast, dinner and supper and I must admit that the food was generally pretty good. This is a senior H mess. Uh, this would be home to 50 odd people. Uh, it wouldn't be full up all the time. Obviously people were asleep, on watch or working. Uh, they would uh, eat in here. Food came up from the galley and it was served by two lads called the messmen. We had a bar at sea. It was generally not used at all. If we had a fire on board, one of the first actions of the crew were to grab hold of the emergency breathing system and these were one of the masks we would use and we would plumb it in like that and then we could breathe off it as required for quite some considerable time. We're now in the uh, weapon storage compartment uh, where obviously all our torpedoes and missiles are stored but this also doubles up to our escape compartment in an emergency. So the scenario if we're uh, on the bottom of the, the seabed and how we get off the submarine, uh, safest way is to wait for rescue from a DSRV uh, but other options are to uh, suit up uh, two people into the uh, tower uh, flood the tower, lid pops open, they go flying to the surface and then we drain it down another two. Uh, an extreme situation is if this was flooded compartment uh, with this watertight bulkhead door shut, uh, we would all then be on this emergency air which is regulated to the depth you're at. And then we pop the hatch open because we're all underwater already and then one at a time, go. And then the next person hot on their heels would go.
still in the WSC lower level, but we're just about to demonstrate the discharge of a weapon, whether it be a torpedo and missile from our torpedo tubes. Hopefully this is the first our adversaries uh, know that we're there. The sound you hear is high pressure air pushing a piston uh, through this long tube here and in front of that piston is a column of water. The water then goes round the back of the torpedo tube and with the bow caps open it will force the torpedo or missile out of the torpedo tube. Uh, the torpedo or missile then becomes autonomous and does its own thing, runs off its engines. Uh, if it's a missile it'll go to the surface and launch from within the capsule. Uh, we are now in the lower level of the WSC, Weapons Stowage Compartment. Um, as you can see, we have six uh, torpedo tubes on a submarine, uh, capable of uh, th three different types of uh, weapon. We have the uh, Mark 8 uh, straight running diesel torpedo, the very same torpedo you see in the World War II films. Uh, the, Tigerfish torpedo, which is a wire guided torpedo, which, like the computer game, you can make it turn right, left, go up deeper, faster, and then go active onto a target and it will home in just like a modern uh, weapon system missile uh, in a, an aerial dogfight. And we also have anti ship missiles, which are torpedo launched, the same as a um, torpedo tube launched, and then they go up to the surface, they exit their capsule and then go flying up looking like a proper missile would, uh, looks for its target and this could be 70 kilometers away and then it will uh, then sea skim all the way to that, uh, that ship, uh, usually a capsule ship.